Can you imagine how sorry I am? That simply won't do. I'll make up for it. You'll have your chance. Right now my secretary, Perry LaSalle, needs an escort. He's on Vespucci. An escort? Well, sounds like a job for me. Welcome ladies and people to Archimedean Dynasty. A game I hold very dear in my heart, mainly because of uh, childhood and uh, how I played it. Uh, it is the first in the Equinox series and in my opinion the best. And it might even be the game that uh, brought me into the space genre, even though it's not a space game actually. But rather than talking about it, uh, I'm just going to start because there will be times at which I can talk about all the things uh, there are to talk about this game. So let's just uh, head into the game directly and there will be a cutscene which is quite long, so I'll keep quiet. In the deep sea, you're not on the ground just because you stopped sinking. Peacetime is hard times for Mercers like me. I used to be grateful for every job, no matter how boring or senseless it was. It's part of my routine to provide protection for supply boats and transports. It was my job to guard a sulfur shipment heading from the Gulf of Bengal to the Argentine Basin. Now, sulfur isn't a particularly attractive prize for pirates or anarchists. So I got to wondering why a protective convoy was necessary, especially since there'd been few pirate attacks recently. The captain of the transporter insisted on taking the slalom route through the Malay archipelago, crossing the South Pacific so as to round Cape Horn. I thought maybe he wanted to give himself and the crew a little entertainment in the pleasure domes of the Malay archipelago. A few oars, some surface simulation, who knows? I had nothing against the idea. We passed south of the domes and headed straight for the South Pacific Basin. They came at us from every direction. A torpedo exploding close off my bow jolted me from my daydreams. A small fleet of fighter boats under the flag of the Shogun encircled us. It probably wasn't monarchists, just bandits from the tornado zone. As a greeting, they sent us a flash shark, which penetrated the outer wall of the freighter and knocked out its electrical system. A hungry swarm of bull sharks was after me. It's no fun in a fix like that if you've only got a dilapidated boat with one firing tower. The automatic finder picked out the approaching torpedoes and sent them to the bottom one after the other, while the only thing I could do was fire a few feeble thresher sharks against the agile boats. Then three things happened at once. My location system failed, an explosion astern set my boat rolling, and a smart shogun bomber flashing painted teeth appeared, hovering right in front of me. I might have known that she was behind it all my own personal nightmare from the depths of the tornado zone. I closed the valves on my suit, crawled into the escape hatch, and angrily jettisoned my lifeboat with a blast of compressed air. And not a second too soon, my crippled boat rolled over and sank into darkness as the grinning bomber strafed my titanium capsule with a salvo of hard case shot. One glance at the freighter confirmed what I feared. Two enemy boats had docked on. The crew was being dealt with already. Before I passed out, I thought of my failure, and I wondered why the hell the anarchists needed sulfur so bad. I came to, freezing on a cold metal floor. 
and I didn't know which was sharper, the features of the woman or the blade of the knife she threatened me with. She was a Russo-Japanese named Hung Lung, which means red dragon. A long time ago, in a penal colony in the Sea of Okhotsk, I slept with her. But at that moment, feelings of nostalgia stayed deep. She was the enemy, always had been. I defeated her once in a fight at the edge of the sandwich trench and spared her life. She's like me, and our paths have crossed often. And she's always my enemy. We didn't talk much. She said it would be child's play to slit my throat, but the world still needed me now that evil was reaching out of the depths. I don't know what she meant by that, but it was the first time I ever heard fear in her voice. The Ronin didn't kill me. She did the same as I had done at the sandwich trench. She gave me a tank full of breathing gas and expelled me from a lock into the ocean. The breathing gas had almost run out when an Atlantic ore freighter picked me up. They brought me to the Argentine basin where an unpleasant meeting with my employer was waiting for me. That's where this whole damn business started. And so far to lengthy introduction. Magellan, extraction of biogenic Here we are sediment. at Magellan. 5,423 meters. So uh, yes, it uh, sets the stage uh, for the game and the atmosphere. Uh, there is no voice acting in this game, so I'm going to read out the dialogues. And I'll try to do the voice acting myself, even though I don't really know how to do voices, but uh, you'll have to bear with me with that. And uh, hopefully you like it, then great. If not, uh, maybe this isn't a playthrough for you. But, uh, but rather than talking, let's just uh, start. Aha! Emerald Dead Eye Flint himself, and alive! Shut your yap, Harry. Because in the intro, uh, Flint had a bit of a lower voice, so I'll try to give him that lower voice a bit, but even though I don't really think it fits with all the lines, but uh, well, uh, I'll stick with it. Yeah, I heard you were in a really good mood. Small wonder, the way you and El Topo set me up. No one set you up. You screwed up the mission, that's all. That's between me and El Topo. Besides, anybody can have a bad day once in a while. For you, it seems more like a couple of bad months, Flint. I had a cheap boat. El Topo was stingy and it cost him. Save it. He'll be calling any minute. You can tell him yourself. Be glad to. That's it. So, uh, when you're at these stations, you have a few locations to go to. And, uh, let's uh, head to the crew room first. Talk to the merchants. Uh, so light is the uh, greeting in this game, so like uh, saying hello, uh, all the good, uh, good day to you. Uh, uh, light stranger, may I interest you in f in the finest smoke-free cigarettes? No one else can get them for you here in Magellan Station. Get away from me! I smoked the real thing in a Malayan arp archipelago. Sometimes I can't get out of my words. You have been to the leisure complex? Yeah, and believe me, they've got it all. Surface simulation, sea level air pressure, oxygen, nitrogen, atmosphere, even simulated daylight. A poor tradesman cannot afford these things. Maybe you should change jobs. I was there hunting oxygen smugglers for the clan's union. A wretched gang. Who would need contaminated oxygen from the surface? Yeah, they're a worthless punch. They used the oxygen to make a decomposing breathing gas that they sold to diggers and clay builders. Perhaps if you would buy my cigarettes, one day I too could... Oh, sorry, don't have the time or the money. A colleague of yours took my last money for a bunch of scrap he called a boat. I needed that more urgent than cigarettes. And there's a worker here. Light man, what's up? Whatever I haven't sent to the bottom. Very good. What are you after here in the Argentinian Basin? Yes, sometimes you can choose a dialogue option and I prefer to go for the nicer options because that fits my character better. Uh, and in the 
this case uh, El Topo, you know him? Who doesn't know the old mole? Yeah, he's a legend. I, the living one at that. He drinks all his men under the table. That's how I know him. But he's always got a grip on himself. And everyone trusts him because of it. He's the best boss in Aqua. I'll pass that along. What's your job here? I drive a sediment caterpillar, extracting opal and calcium sediments. And finally, Linda Kroll. Uh, so, on my screen this is displayed as uh, 1080p, but it's not recorded as such and, well, it's just stretched to that uh, proportion. So, to me it looks like uh, moving my mouse up and down goes really slow and sideways really fast, but that's just because uh, it's stretched. But that's just a side note. Linda Kroll. Uh, I re don't really have a high voice, so I can't really make those high pitches, but I'll try my best. Light, you're a mercenary? Yeah, Emerald Flint. I'm Linda Kroll. I heard about your uh, accident. Who hasn't? I'll bet it's on the data channel. Relax, I'm a mercenary too. If one of us gets in trouble, it doesn't stay a secret long. What else have you heard? That dead eye flint is the best. That's true. How's the situation down here? First thing is the shortage of decent food. Plus, we had a few attacks from the tornado zone. Anything serious? Not particularly. I hear the anarchists from Bar Santiago hate El Topo. You think they're looking to push out into the Atlantic? Looks like it. The Argentinian basin is strategically important. How tenacious are they when the heat's on? You better discuss that with Crosshead. He leads the guards. Where can I find him? He should be somewhere else, Vespucci. Thanks for the tip, Linda. Will we be seeing each other again? I don't think so. I'm on my way to the Macquarie Ridge. Good luck, Flint. Yeah, you too, Linda. And here's hoping we meet again. That's it. And here we have El Topo. Light Flint. Light El Topo. Sorry I made a mess of it, but... Can you imagine how sorry I am? That simply won't do. I'll make up for it. You'll have your chance. Right now my secretary, Perry LaSalle, needs an escort. He's on Vespucci. An escort? Well, sounds like a job for me. That's not a job, it's an order. But watch out Flint, the mob from the tornado zone have been making the streets unsafe. Right, so where do you want him? Bring Perry to me, in the asylum. And promptly. Aye aye sir. Uh, so yes, like I said, uh, this is the first game in the Equinox series. Uh, I have to give credit to Equinox too because you also had these kinds of rooms. But there, uh, the rooms light up uh, in case there is a dialogue uh, present there, so you know where to go and where not to go, because that would be a waste of time anyway. Uh, but in this case, uh, they don't have that coloring, so uh, you'll just have to check them manually and see if there is anything here. I know for a fact that there is one here. Fisher. Welcome to Magellan. I'm Station Master Fisher. My name is Flint. One of my workmen told me you're in a good mood. Yeah, and right now that's about all I've got. Well, a little humor doesn't hurt. That's true. Light fissure. And I think that's yeah, nobody here. So we'll have to head to Vespucci. So we'll head to the dock. Dock. Head for Vespucci. I'm not sure if I. Vespucci. Yes, I disabled the. Uh... Biogenic sediments. 4,988 meters. Thank you. So I disabled the uh, cutscenes, but I'll turn them on for a second. Let me see. Movie. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Quit. Quit. So then uh, there are little cutscenes every time you exit the dock and such. So uh, 
I'll just show them uh, for the start, but well, they're basically becoming very repetitive really fast, so I'm going to disable them at some time again. But at least you can get to see them now. Let's uh, talk to this worker. Time is money, stranger. I gotta get QA for Opal Sediments. Hey, I'm just looking around. Look, my pal on the Medjelden station already told me you're a friend of El Topos. What do you do around here? I'm in charge of drilling here on the Spritchy station. We're mining bio sediments. Hey, don't you have a bar here? We make do with the crew assembly rooms. From time to time El Topo throws a big party in this asylum. Good enough. See you around. I don't really know what the use of that was, but uh, we were supposed to talk with Crosshand, so let's do that. Yes. How are you? Not too good. By the way, I'm Crosshand. Nice to meet you, Crosshand. I'm Emerald Flint. Yeah, Linda Kroll told me about you. She sounded a bit nervous. That's just the way women react to me. Ah, I see you're a man of imagination. So, do you need a man around here? Always, but El Topo has the last word. Fine, tell me, how strong are the anarchists at the moment? Well, they aren't particularly tough because they're poorly trained, but why don't you ask Terry the Blaster? He lives for battle statistics. Thanks for the tip. I'm headed out on patrol now, but you can probably find Terry somewhere here on Vespucci. And that dialogue. And I know that he is in the dark, uh, along with Nero, who is another trader. Salam. I'm no importer of merchandise and illusions from the clan union. I'm also rather busy. Salam, Emerald Flint. What sort of things do you have, Nero? I think I should give the merchants uh, a bit of an accent. So. The miracles of the world, my friends. Cigarettes that can imitate a glowing tip in Helium 17, perhaps? That's old news. What else? A bottle of sparkling camo campaign. Champagne. <laughs> a real rarity at 30 bars pressure. Really? Champagne bottles that pop normally weigh 25 kilos. Now this one, the pressure is equalized with an extra cylinder. Interesting. What else? A water organ. Put it in the water behind the boat and you get wonderful music. How extravagant. Perhaps a culture of luminous fungi. Light for the bedroom. Impressive. How about a holographic recording of the floating Bombay Ballet? Look, do you have anything that's actually useful? Well, I happen to have a few drops of carfentanil, whatever that might be. Enough for at least 300 wonderful journeys to dreamland. I need to be alert at all times, Nero. Ah, Flash 9 was invented for just this. A neurological miracle, you'll never have to sleep again. Seems like today's not your lucky day, Master Nero. I have to move on. Made a market guy, you Emerald Flint. And here's Terry. A lot of very boring people have wasted my time today. You make the 17. You actually keep count? You must be Flint, eh? Crosshead warned me that you might come. I'm Terry the Blaster. What can you tell me about the attackers from the Tornado Zone, Terry? They are poorly armed. Most of them use vendettas. Only a few have maximum impact. Mm, my weapons aren't much better. In that case, you should outmaneuver them. They are poorly trained. So yes, uh, my boat isn't the best one uh, right now. It's uh, the worst one, actually. But, well. What do you do about it? Let's talk to the merchant first. Lights, I am the head of the traders. How can I help you? By not trying to sell me something. You are the miscellaneous person you never told me about. You have already turned down two of my traders. 
have. Right, and what do you have to offer me? I'm selling the latest and finest software for updating your ship's computers. Well, alright, if it's not too expensive. On the contrary, this might lead to a well paid job for you. Really, I'm all ears. Yes, but shall we take first things first about the merchandise you have agreed to buy? Wow, look at the time, I'll get back to you about the software. And that's one of those lines that I think uh, maybe not fits a lower voice all that much, but oh. Gwendol in here. What a honey, I hope I can do something for you, sailor. Well, I didn't know El Topo allowed independence around here. Sure, even a great boss of the Argentinian base needs a little relief from time to time. Ha, uh, you're alright lady, what's your name? Gwendolyn, lady of the islands. And I'm dead eye, I hit every time. I'm curious about how much you're exaggerating, but I have to run. I'm meeting a businessman and he's a great customer. So yes, uh, Flint is quite a charm. But uh, we'll see that in the rest of the game. Uh, so here's Perry. Let's uh, talk to him. Get the uh, missions going. Or the main plot anyway. So, what did El Topo have to say? I'm supposed to take you to him. Great, let's go. I hope you actually plan to make an effort on this mission. Consider yourself lucky I'm in a boat with you. We better get to the dock. El Topo wants to see you. He told me he needs his uh, medic. Whatever that might be. Uh, there's not really much use to going to the weapon store and arms dealer yet. Actually, I could sell these buzzers since I'm not using any buzzers and the torpedoes as well. I don't use torpedoes, especially not at the beginning of the game. When I have lots of credits, uh, things might become different, but. Uh, for now, it doesn't matter. So, let's head to the asylum. You go to Bo's asylum. And this is one of those cutscenes. And here we go, mission. Attack. Shortly before reaching El Topo's asylum, your ship is attacked. Someone who hates Perry LaSalle's guts even more than you do wants him dead. To bad LaSalle is in your ship and he's your boss's secretary. So we'll have to do our thing. Uh, I'm not sure if I already mentioned that this is not the 3D, 3D FX version, but rather the normal version because I couldn't get the 3D FX version to work. But in my opinion, the graphics are still okay. And uh, now I need to find the keys. Uh, there are a lot of keys in this game, and you can't remap them, so you'll just have to get used to them. I might remap my keyboard just to fit that, but it uh, doesn't matter. Let's uh, start. Power surge detected. That's it. So, yes, there's also text uh, during the missions. But I'm not uh, going to read uh, out all of those because uh, when things heat up, uh, I don't want to lose my focus on just reading uh, the text. Just consider them uh, text messages rather than radio messages, and uh, that sets the stage. Anyway, let's uh, yes, autopilot is available. So here we go. The ship that this junk dealer foisted off on me didn't offer a lot of comfort. It wasn't particularly agile, but it was lightly armed, and to my surprise, it was watertight. in a position to make many demands because I just screwed up a pretty good job. I picked up Perry LaSalle, who was seething with rage, and on his way to see my employer, El Topo. El Topo, the mole, 
so named because he hides his eyes from the light, except when it comes from the surveillance monitors in his dismal mountain fortress. The Mole is a powerful force behind the scenes, and he has access to the most important power centers in Aqua. I was sure that here I'd find out what was really on board that freighter. So here we are at Topo's Asylum. You probably didn't notice, but I had to edit in that video because uh, the game crashed after I uh, turned on autopilot and it tends to do so once I uh, try to finish a mission so maybe I have to tweak my settings, I don't know, but it's uh, going to be kind of hard to play if uh, I have to change settings all the time anyway, we're here to face our former employer, so it's going to be a tough talk probably but, uh, that will have to wait until the next episode because uh, I think this is uh, good enough of an introduction to this game and uh, if you like it uh, then uh, now you can probably decide uh, what you want to stick around with my voice acting and watch the rest of the game or uh, maybe nah and uh, you can go uh, watch something else that's uh, entirely up to you of course anyway thanks for watching Pietrus out